Hello there, my name is Kevin Lewis and I run developer relations at Directus. And today I'm gonna to give you a whirlwind tour of WebSockets, what they are, how they work, and some specific points of interest around how they are implemented in Directus 10.3. Now, to first understand WebSockets, we need to understand HTTP. HTTP is a transfer protocol for data between computers. Uh, a client describes an end user device like a laptop or a phone, and the server describes a computer that runs one or more applications that allows clients to access in order to get data or files. These are often called resources. But the important thing to note for this video is that HTTP requests work on the idea that you send a single request, something happens on the server, but eventually it responds with a single response. So that is kind of an HTTP uh, connection, one request and one response. And you can, of course, send further HTTP requests with data returned from the first to kind of follow on, but they are distinctly different requests. Now, in order to get live data using just HTTP, you often have to do something that is known as polling. And polling effectively means that at some set kind of regular schedule, we will go off to the server and do a brand new HTTP request to see if there's any new data. There may not be, in which case it was a needless request, but there may be, in which case we can act on it in our application. So you might choose to do this every 15 minutes for a little stats dashboard in the corner of your office that you're not staring at constantly, or it could be every second to watch stocks. But the important thing to note is that data is only as live as your polling interval. I could make a request and then a few milliseconds later data is changed, but I have to wait until the next time I make that request in order to receive that updated data. So with HTTP, each connection lasts for one request and one response. But WebSockets are, are an alternative transport protocol where once connected, a persistent two-way connection is opened between the client and the server and either side can send data down it. Um, and so instead of needing to go and make a, a request, a response, a request, a response, and that have to be a whole round trip with WebSockets, it's kind of like an open connection that it, either side can fire data down. And it's not dissimilar to a string telephone, I suppose. I'm not sure it's the perfect analogy, but once established, either side can send data down for the other side. So just as a checkpoint here, HTTP requests consists of a single request and a single response. And the main strategy in fetching data once a page has loaded involves polling or making a brand new request at a regular interval. To kind of contrast that, WebSockets consists of one connection handshake, uh, which is done at the beginning of a WebSocket connection, and then they are persistent and either side can freely send data down that connection. Let's talk a little bit about Directus, and then we will bring this all together to talk about how Directus implements WebSockets. Now, hopefully you've already heard of Directus, but if not, Directus sits alongside your SQL database. Developers can still absolutely interact with a database directly, but most developers will instead interact with the database through their provided APIs or the Data Studio web application that Directus provides. And there's lots of benefits to this, which I won't go into in great depth because I want to just talk about WebSockets. But what is important is that Directus emits events when database operations happen. What are events? What are the different events? Well, we'll talk about that now. Uh, this is a, a very, very cropped list of some events that, um, uh, that are emitted by directors whenever activities happen in the database. You'll see here that there are some events that happen when data in a collection or when items in a collection are created, when they're updated and when they're deleted. Um, so we call these items, you may hear them called database records or rows, we call them items. So whenever data gets manipulated inside of a collection, events are omitted. And those events can be used in other parts of Directus by extensions or by WebSockets. Now events are already used 
in flows and hooks. Uh, if you don't know, Directors Flows is our automation builder. Um, and you can see here that this particular flow will be triggered whenever data is changed in any of these six collections in this example project. So whenever data is created, updated, or deleted in any of these collections, the flow will commence. We also have hooks, which is one of our extension types. Uh, right here, this code will run at the beginning of a create request before that request is undertaken. And this one, the action, will run whenever an action has been undertaken. In any case, you'll notice items.create is there, so the events are used inside of hooks. And out of Directors 10.3, these emitted events are also sent over WebSocket connections. The basic flow is that you would open a connection to your Directors project, a WebSocket connection. You would send a message down that collection to say that you want to subscribe to changes in a specific collection. Here we're saying that collection is called Messages. And then whenever uh, something happens in that collection, it not only will be sent to any relevant hook extensions, any relevant directors flows, but it will also be sent out to any subscribed clients. Now, because these events are emitted as a result of data changing in a database, this means persistence is baked in by default. With some WebSocket or real-time as a service providers, all they do is push around data uh, in real time, but as developers, it's down to us to persist that data. But in this context, in this implementation, there is real time data in your application, but absolutely backed by your database, which is really, really nice. Another really cool thing you can do is execute all CRUD operations over your WebSocket connection. So you can create, read, update, and delete items by sending different messages. So we can see here in the green that we're saying, hey, in the messages collection, I want you to create an item with this data. You can also update and delete items over that WebSocket connection. And while not illustrated here, all of the CRUD operations once completed will get a message sent in response over that WebSocket connection. When you subscribe to changes in a collection, you initially get um, a, an init event back for initialize, um, and that will contain all data existing in that collection already. And then when changes happen in that collection, we will receive further events. For example, here, type subscription, event, create, and the data from that new created item. One thing you may also notice here is that when we are subscribing to changes, in the messages collection, we are able to utilize Directus's powerful query language to augment the data that comes back so it's most useful for our application. Now, the key point to our implementation is that we now expose changes to collection items via WebSockets. As a little bit of a checkpoint once again, events are emitted when database operations happen through Directus. And these events are already used in flows and hooks. But now, once connected, devs can also subscribe to updates from a collection and receive messages whenever something happens. And then, just as an additional bonus, the connection can also accept all CRUD operations. While not mentioned here, we also have a GraphQL subscriptions interface. Uh, so if you prefer to work with Graph, QL subscriptions over kind of standard WebSockets, you are more than welcome to do that. Now, we're not going to go into great depth about the use cases this unlocks, but here are a few to get your creative juices flowing. A multi-user chat is probably the hello world of real-time uh, demos. Building live data dashboards, syncing a user's state or settings between devices, uh, real-time notifications, or doing things like showing the current sports scores or your current location, like when you're in a mobile chat app and you can share your location for like 15 minutes, um, or showing live votes or stuff like that. Now, just to wrap up, I do want to talk about what our WebSockets implementation does not do today as of Directors 10.3. Firstly, we do not emit events or data related to who connects or who is connected via WebSockets. Um, you can 
augment this, I suppose, using the tools available, but we don't offer this natively as inbuilt functionality. So if ever you're building something like a game where you need to know who's online, you may have to be working around the fact that all we're doing is sharing data changes in collections. Things like status indicators or collaborative editing and cursors also require a bit of hacky work. And really, it's around the disconnect event. You can tell when someone connects if you immediately emit, you know, uh, if you immediately push data into a database or update some kind of data. Um, but knowing when they've disconnected, that's up to you to implement today. Also, GraphQL subscriptions are read only. This is not a, you know, a limitation of the director's implementation of GraphQL subscriptions, but instead is how GraphQL subscriptions work. They are inherently read only. So just know that that's the case, but that is by design. So in summary, WebSockets allow you to subscribe to changes in a collection and receive real-time updates in your application. You can also create, read, update, and delete items over the same connection. We support both standard WebSocket and GraphQL subscriptions, and those WebSocket messages are triggered by directus events. So your data is persisted by the database uh, or in your database by design. And we have several guides in our docs to help you get started, and we hope to grow that library over time. So if you had never heard of WebSockets before or you're curious about the director's implementation, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop into our Discord server, directors.chat, and we'll be happy to see you around. Have a great day and bye for now.